Yeah. So, so there's a lot of pros to it. I just, I want to spend just a second talking about some potential downsides to it that I've seen, not, not holes in the model per se, but the way this is just the lens in which I look through in, in working with so many agents is that I think maybe you can argue that the worst thing for a new real estate agent is putting them by themselves without anybody around in their basement, in their underwear, and think that they're going to succeed by themselves. It's probably the worst thing. And yeah. it's maybe when I look at that model for, for, a, for the new guy, not, not guys like you and I have been doing this for 15, 17 years. I'm talking about Bob, who just gets his license. My belief is he probably needs to have some some hands-on support around him potentially because yeah. you get that guy by himself he's going to take the path of least resistance do you agree do you disagree how do you help agents succeed in a cloud-based environment where, where they have no environment yeah you know it's, it's a great observation and, and and that's something i struggled with in the beginning because even though i had some support i still realized early on and maybe this is because of my athletic background you know, professional sports and all that, dude, I'm just a competitor. And if I want something, I'm going to go get it. So whether you give me support or not, I'm going to figure it out. And prior to the real estate industry specifically, I was naive enough to think that, well, everybody, even if they're not that way now, they can activate that. I thought everybody just had that potential. And I still, to a degree, believe that people do. However, certain individuals are going to be a lot more resourceful and go that extra mile, right? Which is kind of that entrepreneur seed, whatever we wanna call it, right? Other people, yes, are gonna be a little bit more hesitant and require that somebody be in their corner or be readily accessible to them. And I think just having that safety net in their mind of saying, hey, I have my broker here next to me. I can walk to his office. I can drive to the location and, and you know go to this office and, and be with my peers and be in a different environment. I think not only is that appealing for certain people, in a way, it may be required because not everybody's going to be the, the the solo beast that comes in and just starts wrecking everything and getting a bunch of deals and they're self-sustaining. They can be on their own island. Again, I was naive enough to think everybody could do that and everybody wanted to do that, but some people don't. Some people look at real estate as a part-time endeavor. Some people That's just right. want to join a team, funnel in some deals, provide for their family, do six, seven, eight deals or even less a year put food on the table and they're satisfied. So I think depending on, on the type of person that you're getting, then yes, absolutely. There could be a hole in it and having that kind of retail space is good. That's why like on my end, I have two office locations here in Miami. One of them as a benefit to people, especially newer agents, I offer them that space and say, Hey, part of the, the benefits package of joining with us is I have a local space here that you can use as a workspace to meet with clients, to make calls and we leave it open and exclusively available for that reason because i was looking just like you at the potential cons and saying if we can patch this thing up or make it better what are some things we can do to kind of you know even that out and make sure that it's just this complete package that is really really beneficial for everybody yeah it's phenomenal because i think you and i both would agree when it comes to human performance and that's the world you come from i think at the top of that chart it's got to be accountability right and it doesn't matter the, the person's talent. It's because we're humans, our innate biology uh, puts us in a position to take the path of least resistance. Right. So put, put a great human being in, in a world where they have high levels of accountability, they're going to win. They're going to want to win. They're going to want to outperform people that are around them uh, versus just putting them by themselves. And what you just said is, 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 is so cool in that you have space for folks. When I thought about that, Brian, I thought about doing something like this, and I don't know if you've, you've, I'm sure you have, but I thought about a world where we can create an environment for these people that is still virtual, but they're not alone. So creating a world where we have a, a running Zoom, so to speak, and we're all prospecting together, you're checking in, you're posting your numbers throughout the day. Is that something you guys do uh, uh, in your group at all? Yeah. You know, and we're still building it out. Like that's something I originally implemented a lot with my private groups and my coaching years ago and people loved it. Um, now we're extending it like uh, two of my friends. It's not official yet, so I'm not announcing it. Right. Uh, two of my good friends that I'm bringing over from California that are big producers. We're going to create our own little mastermind for 
real specifically um, where we do have these open zoom calls you know weekly calls private group because we do want to provide that environment for people where we are attracting people from like you're in michigan you know illinois i had somebody reach out from north dakota and maybe locally what we just described previously they can't find that even if they want it and that was a pre predicament that i was in when i started i said man i can't find other people that are on this wavelength that i am even at a great office so can i find this virtually and 100 percent, i think that's key because moving forward especially with the way the world is going that's almost going to have to be a necessity because a 1, lot of thousand percent yeah they, they're, it's going to have to be virtual. And again, you're either going to adapt or you're going to be left behind. So I guess that final kind of bridge, uh, you know, gap that we need to bridge is can we get as many people as possible to take that step? Because you know, man, you've been in this world now for a while. Getting people to take that step willingly and engage is always the toughest part. Like yeah. sometimes I've even brought in people to my team and, you know, I'll end up letting them go. I'm like, dude, we gave you everything. All you had to do was engage and step up. I can't do that for you. Like you, you, you come in with these aspirations and these goals, and I see a lot of agents do that. But when it's time for them to take that step and say, okay, I need to join the Zoom. I need to be a part of these meetings. I need to step up. They don't do it. And that's that thing that's been racking my brain, bro, for years. How can I, if possible, like project myself into that person and get them to walk forward? Because sometimes so that true. last step, yeah, it, it's just insane, dude. Like, and it blows my mind. It really does. Well, and, and to that point, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. There's not, we don't have, a, in our industry of real estate sales, as you know, we don't have a problem with desire. Everybody comes in the business thinking they're going to be do this and do that. And I want this. I want that. I'm like, yeah, I know. But what makes you different? Because so does everybody else. Everybody else wants to make a lot of money. Everybody else wants a Ferrari. They want the big house. They want to, I, I get it. Everybody says that the reality is, you know, as soon as it is time for them to show up to do the work, they go into the witness protection program. It's like, Bob, I thought you, I thought you said you wanted to, what, what happened to that Rolex that was on the vision board? Yeah, that's not so important anymore. Oh, I got it. I got it. Right. So it's, it's the problem is in my opinion is four numbers, 1099. As soon as you put somebody in a 1099 independent contractor role, they lose that accountability that they had at their W-2 job, which they're trying to run away from, which was the best thing for them. That's a whole nother podcast you and I could do is what, what would be really cool to see is if we W-2 new realtors for their first two or three years until they had the habits, the behaviors, they got a salary, and then they graduated yep. to be their own business owner. That'd be interesting to see. Thoughts on that? It's, it's, it's interesting because what you just described is something I would tell realtors. So as a way of, of testing what you just said, I've been doing this for years. I would tell them, look, what if I guaranteed you that your first year you would make X amount, 150, 200,000, but this is what you had to do. And then literally what I do is I itemize every single thing that I did and every hour that I put in my first year. And I ask them, would you do it? And they're like, absolutely. I said, great, then get to work. Cause that's exactly what I did my first year. And I yeah. earned that much money. But the moment that realization comes in again, that they're going to be 1099, it's like, well, all of a sudden it's not guaranteed and all these stories and all these hesitations come out. And I'm just like, dude, you literally just agreed to it. And now all of a sudden yeah. it doesn't work. Like, give me a break. It's so funny. Right. And so, uh, to, to put a bow on that conversation, we'll, we'll unpack something else. You know, my whole thing is I have this this approach that I that I coach to, and we call it the daily thirty, right? If you have thirty conversations a day, two hundred forty times, that's seventy two hundred conversations a year. If you do that, you can't help but win. And so, to your point, what what I've done is I said to to Bob, I always call everybody Bob or Sue. Uh, I told Bob, I said, Bob, listen, I know your goal is to make one hundred fifty thousand. All you have to do is 7,200 conversations. So if we split that into 240 working days, it's 30 conversations a day. So if we take the $150,000 and we divide that by 7,200 conversations, it's 20 bucks every time you make a contact. And here's what we'll do. I will write you the check today for the 150. I'll put the 150 in your checking account, Bob. And every day you don't have 30 conversations, I deduct $20. And let's see how much you you end up with at the end of the year. And they always end up with nothing because they never make the 30 contacts yeah. a day. 100%. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's that simple. Yeah, it is that simple. Just really hard for people to do.